All right, this is the second part, chapter 10. We're now talking briefly about light. Uh, so light is electromagnetic energy. Uh, it has a wavelength and a frequency. So the wavelength is the distance between the, uh, the peaks or the crests of the wave. Uh, and that's how we identify the type of electromagnetic energies. Um, so for example, UV versus visible, uh, gamma or, or what have you. It all deals with the uh, wavelength. So here's the electromagnetic spectrum. We work in uh, visible light. Here's green, which we'll be talking about in uh, just a second, UV and so on. Uh, shorter wavelengths have a higher energy. Uh, maybe you want to think of uh, more peaks in, that, in a period of time, so therefore more energy. Um, and the visible spectrum, this is what we see, uh, including that which drives photosynthesis. So pigments are the component that absorbs the light, the visible light, um, in order to convert that into chemical energy. And uh, some light gets reflected. Not all light is used. Uh, light that gets reflected is, in fact, what you see. So if you see someone in a red shirt, that shirt is red because it's every color except for red. That sounds a little bit weird to say. But uh, red, uh, visible light, red wavelength is bouncing off the shirt and entering your eyes so you perceive it as red, whereas all the other colors are being absorbed into the material. In this case, in plants, green is bouncing off. And green is the uh, least successful color uh, for performing photosynthesis. Uh, we can measure light with a machine called a spectrophotometer. Uh, it sends the light through the pigments, and it actually measures uh, how much light passes through, uh, how much gets absorbed versus how much passes through, uh, along the lines of what we just talked about. And this is what you would see. Uh, you break open the light into its component visible parts, into its rainbow and then shine it through this uh, solution. The solution looks green. Um, so uh, the reading indicates that chlorophyll absorbs very little green light because uh, green passes through specifically. And here you notice blue gets absorbed. Very little blue reaches the, uh, um, the machine itself, or the, the reading component is what I'm looking for, the photoelectric tube. So this is showing us how effective different wavelengths are for driving photosynthesis. So uh, a while back, there was a very interesting experiment that uh, looked at different wavelengths of light and how photosynthetically important they were. Uh, and this created an absorption spectrum, as it was called. Um, and here we have different pigments absorbing different wavelengths of light. So the chlorophylls largely prefer uh, the violets and the blue lights. Okay? They absorb more of the, the energy from those lights. Uh, as well as some in the orange-red, but you'll notice green is the worst. We also have carotenoids. Those are the three main pigments uh, in spinach, for example, for our uh, photosynthesis lab. Um, and this we actually know from uh, absorption spectra that was um, done with bacteria, uh, an experiment we'll talk about here in just a bit with cyanobacteria. But here again you can see the action spectrum. Um, this is the rate of photosynthesis measured by oxygen release. Um, higher here for these lower wavelengths and the higher wavelengths and very little occurring for the middle wavelengths where green is. So here is the, expect, the experiment done by Theodore Engelman. And he uh, basically took algae, sorry, not uh, cyanobacteria, he took algae, uh, the bacteria will come in just a second, and uh, he split light through a prism and he exposed the algae to all these different wavelengths of light as you can see. So these algae were exposed to purple and blue and he measured how much oxygen the algae were producing. He used aerobic bacteria um, so that uh, which segments of algae were releasing the most oxygen and thus photosynthesizing the most, uh, that was based on which wavelengths of light that you can see here. So the bacteria congregated, bacteria like the oxygen, uh, sorry, bacteria like the CO2, sorry, the oxygen that is being produced by the algae from photosynthesis. So where there's more oxygen, the bacteria grow better. And so here you see these are aerobic bacteria. They like the oxygen. They grew very, very well. Here they grew very poorly. And this uh, band down here, you see this is the algae growing. Uh, so the violet blue and the red portions of the spectrum were most effective at driving photosynthesis. And this is one potential thing you could do as part of your photosynthesis lab. Here we have chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Very minor difference. In chlorophyll A, we just have a methane uh, methyl group here. And in chlorophyll B, we have a CHO. You don't have to know this structurally, of course. Um, but you will know that this hydrocarbon tail enables this to 
be found or stuck inside the membrane, and this is uh, sticking out um, as far as the, uh, and thus being able to be exposed to light. There's other pigments besides chlorophyll. We just generally talk about chlorophyll. Those other pigments largely serve the purpose of absorbing light and then funneling it or transferring it to the one main chlorophyll in the reaction center, and that's called chlorophyll A. And here's that chlorophyll that we're talking about. The purpose of the chlorophyll is that once the light gets absorbed, on this chlorophyll molecule are electrons. We'll talk in a, in a bit about where these electrons come from, but these electrons get excited by the sunlight and they go to a, an excited uh, or energetic state and thus become unstable. And then here, once they get excited, here's where we go stepwise down through an electron transport chain, just like we saw in respiration to release the energy from those electrons. Um, so this is chlorophyll. Uh, just chlorophyll that gets illuminated and actually fluoresces and gives off light and heat from the um, energetic electrons that are going down stepwise. You can see that they're uh, energetic. So here we have what I was talking about, chlorophyll A in the reaction center. All these other pigment molecules, whether they be uh, keratins or chlorophyll B, they absorb the sun and they funnel the absorb energy from the light and funnel it towards the reaction center. And then in the reaction center we have the electrons and they'll excite uh, those electrons they'll get excited. There's actually two photosystems here. This is just photosystem in general. We'll talk soon about photosystem one and photosystem two. Um, all right. Uh, so here, photosystem one and photosystem two, there's two types um, found within the thylakoid membrane. And both are important. Both absorb sunlight. Photosystem two occurs first in the electron transport chain. And then photosystem one. I know, a little bit confusing, but they deal with which wavelength of light uh, they absorb best. Much of what we'll talk about is called non-cyclic electron flow. This is largely similar to what you saw in respiration. Um, non-cyclic electron flow. It's the primary pathway. Um, and its purpose is to produce NADPH, again, P for photosynthesis, ATP, and oxygen. In the other electron transport chain in respiration, we didn't have any ATP production. We uh, moved uh, or created a proton gradient, where here we generate a little bit of ATP. And so here we see it. Here's photosystem two starting first. Light energy gets funneled to the reaction center here. P680 means uh, this is a wavelength or uh, yeah, of 680. Here water, as we mentioned previously in the first part, water gets split into three component parts. Protons, oxygen, and electrons. Light does not split water apart. We don't entirely understand exactly how this occurs, but we do know this is an enzymatic reaction, and it's regulated by that enzyme. When water gets split into its parts, the electrons get funneled to the reaction center, and then the light excites just those electrons to this primary electron acceptor, and then funneled down uh, through an electron transport chain. And as it does so, it produces just a little bit of ATP. The electrons then make their way to photosystem one in the reaction center, once again get excited by light, funneled down through a, a small electron transport chain. And then those electrons get grabbed by NADP+, which is going to get um, reduced into NADPH. And the enzyme that does this is NADP plus reductase. It's a reductase because it reduces uh, NADP+. And then NADPH is going to carry the energized electrons over to the Calvin cycle uh, in the stroma, as you can see here, uh, to power the formation of sugar, as will the ATP, by the way. So a really nice analogy that they have for this is that the photon from the sun is actually like a hammer and it excites or, or causes these electrons to jump, which are then passed from person to person to person. And as this wheel turns in this mill, it makes or generates ATP. Then the electrons get hammered again, passed to this person. And then we have uh, the electrons that get finished or caught in a bucket. And that bucket is NADP+. But you need to prevent those excited electrons from bouncing out of the bucket. Think of them like a, a bunny rabbit that you want to keep inside the bucket. So you got to cap them. And you cap them using protons uh, so that they don't escape and you can harness the energy. Sometimes, instead of non-cyclic electron flow, there is cyclic electron flow. This is under some extreme conditions. And in this case, only photosystem one gets used and only ATP is produced. We don't get NADPH. This is under uh, extreme conditions like that which uh, think of in a drought where you don't have a lot of water to constantly re reform or put in new electrons. Each time you need to do 
this electron transport chain, if it were non-cyclic, you have to add new electrons to this reaction center. Well, if we don't want to use up water because we don't have enough, we could do cyclic electron flow where the electrons just cycle back and forth back to this through this series and each time slowly making ATP. Uh, we'll take a break on this right here.